What's going on people? This is Shoke. Obviously today I want to talk about this uh, new news coming out about a new Switch model coming out next year as early as summer 2019 from the Wall Street Journal. I got the article popped up right here so I can make sure I have all the details just in case I forget something. Um, but yeah, for those of you who may not know by now, I'm sure most of you do. But apparently there is a new Switch model coming out next year. This has not, this has not been officially confirmed by Nintendo. But this is the Wall Street Journal, right? They're not going to just make up some some bull crap about, you know, something like this. They have legitimate sources, of course. They're the freaking Wall Street Journal. They've cracked lots of gaming news in the past, you know, and it's always been correct or at least based off of something that was real, right? Something that was actually physically manifested in some type of, you know, form or fashion. You know what I mean? Um, so this is real. This isn't necessarily a rumor at this point. It's guaranteed. It's a real thing. Um, it's just a matter of how exactly is Nintendo going to go on about this. And so here are my thoughts on what I think Nintendo should do regarding new hardware with a new Switch iteration. Um, I think for sure, most definitely. I'm not saying this would be completely useless if they don't do this. But I think Nintendo should definitely beef up the hardware of this newer model. I know a lot of people might, um, well, maybe not a lot, we'll see. But some people may argue that um, that's a bad idea. You don't want to split their user base because, you know, some games will probably be exclusive to that hardware or, you know, something like that and things of that nature. Um, I don't think that's going to be a problem at all. At least that's probably not going to be a concern for Nintendo because we've seen Nintendo do this, you know, already with the new uh, 3DS they came out with some years ago. And while it wasn't a whole lot, there was some exclusive games you know, on that on that model. And I believe there's also some, some games that ran better on it as well, just in general, if not all games or whatever. Um, I think that had to be tailored. I really don't recall. I wasn't too much of a 3DS guy. DS, though, DS was my system. Um, but yeah, I don't, don't really think that's a concern. Um, and not only just, of course, the what we've seen with the new 3DS, but also, of course, with the uh, PS4 Pro and the Xbox One X. You know, I, before those systems came out, people always thought about, you know, the splitting of the user base and these things came out, the new 3DS came out and they really haven't caused any issues. You know what I mean? So I do not think at all in the slightest that beefing up this hardware uh, would be problematic in any shape, form or fashion. I don't think so. Now, I don't think it'll be the worst thing in the world. I don't think it will be, like I said, completely useless if this was just a remodel and just that. Like, let's say it was just a slimmer switch. Uh, a slightly improved screen, battery life, you know, things of that nature. Th that'd be great. And yeah, that would push <coughs> excuse me, that would push sales, um, especially in Japan, because, you know, Japan is big on the whole handheld thing and whatnot. Um, and as we've seen in times past before, you know, with the original DS and the 3DS, not even making stronger models, but just making slimmer models of, you know, handhelds are always going to boost sales. So either, either way they decide to go with it, it's going to be a good idea. You see what I mean? I want to make sure I put that point out there. There really is no lose-lose situation. But if they don't actually beef up the hardware, I do think that that will be a huge missed opportunity. And if you guys can't really understand why, I mean, just kind of think about the performance of the games we have so far. Switch games look okay. They look okay. But this is really the first time where Nintendo themselves aren't really able to get the to get the performance they want out of their games, you know, and that's crazy. And times pass, you know, third parties have always struggled with Nintendo hardware for the most part. Um, at least in recent times, you know, with the Wii and Wii U or whatnot, GameCube and A64 were a bit better, although there was limitations on those systems as well due to the, uh, you know, the, the, the media, the type of media they use, the mini DVDs and the cartridges for the N64, when they had the CDs and the DVDs respectively. Um, but, you know, during those times, at least Nintendo, right, was still able to make absolutely beautiful, gorgeous games on those systems and get the performance they wanted. Nintendo has always been big on, you know, 60 frames per second and whatnot. And, you know, this is really the first generation where we don't know if a first part Nintendo title is going to run in 60 frames. You know, a, a, a big one anyways. And that's kind of crazy if you think about it, right? Like... You know, Breath of the Wild was 30 most of the time, you know. Um, I know Mario Kart is 1080p, 60 frames still, but that was also, you know, um, 
that was also a, a, a Wii U game. Yeah, Breath of the Wild was also a Wii U game as well, but of course, Breath of the Wild is, you know, open world and way more taxing than a game like Mario Kart, which is just a racer and whatnot. Um, you know, Xenoblade. <laughs> Xenoblade 2 is a, is a really clear example. If any of you guys have played that game, you'll see like, uh And I do think that, I don't think Xenoblade 2 is specifically all of the system's fault. I do think Monolith could have done better themselves and kind of optimized the game a bit more. Um, but yeah, oftentimes that game looks really muddy. Uh, there's frame rate drops in that game and the handheld mode. Whew. Xenoblade 2 in handheld mode looks looks so bad. <laughs> that game looks so bad. I, if I remember correctly from the test that I like Digital Foundry and a couple other people did, Xenoblade 2 got down to like 240p sometimes and that's just insane because that's like 3ds resolution mind you this is a 720p screen but a lot of games on the switch aren't even running in 720p in handheld mode right so uh, you know maybe yeah doing 900p on console i mean that that's that's okay that's doable but considering the handheld form factor is the most i won't say integral but you know it's it's oh, well, it probably is honestly it, it's the whole point. It's the whole selling point of the system, right? Playing your games on the go. I do think that that side of the performance at least should be, you know, optimized and looking the best that it can, right? If we have these games on a 720p screen that can't run in 720p, that simply means that the, the, the system itself isn't powerful enough, right? If the screen that you put on a handheld is is featuring a higher resolution than most of the games on it will actually run you know that's that's an issue and that's that's a problem um so wall street journal has confirmed that there would be hardware changes in here so you know that's not something we really have to debate about or argue we, we know there will be hardware changes we just don't have any specific details on whether or not those hardware changes will actually be spec related you know in regards to you know, the, uh, you know, CPU, GPU, you know, RAM, things of that nature. I don't really see them touching the RAM. I could definitely see them moving up to a different architecture, most likely Pascal, which was uh, the rumored architecture we thought the NX might have had, but they ended up going with, um, what is this, which I forgot. I haven't been following this up in a while. Like I think it was Maxwell, I believe, um, in the NVIDIA architecture and whatnot. So they could move up to the next NVIDIA architecture with this system. I think that would be a great idea. Um, I've seen some people on like those forums, you know, a lot of, you know, ex gaff people have gone over to these other places, the names escape me right now, and they're, um, theorizing that, you know, it might be kind of, um, not at the same level, but kind of approaching the ballpark of base PS4. I don't see that happening if they did do a hardware, um, a, you know, a power revision for the system. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, you know, like I said, I haven't, I'm not brushed up on my tech stuff when you used to come to these things. You know, back in the day, guys, when I was in high school and whatnot, I had way more time to look this stuff up and research it. But I'm pretty sure that putting something on the level of PS4 in a form factor like this, or something that's possibly even thinner, because, you know, whenever Nintendo does a revision of hardware, it's usually thinner. I couldn't imagine the power of PS4 being something this thin and skinny like that. Or something skinnier. That'd just be insane to me. Um, but like we've always said before, and like I've pointed out multiple times on this channel, of course, it's not always about the raw power. It's also about the APIs and the feature set that the system actually has. So as long as it has the ability to uh, have things scaled down to it, that's almost just as important as having just the raw grunt and the raw power itself. And the reason why, because I really haven't gotten to this yet, but the reason why, um, outside of the, what I already pointed out with Nintendo's own games, but the reason why I think that Nintendo should definitely go with the, the beefing up the power route is because while the third-party Switch, Switch support has been, you know, okay, you know, we're getting some things here and there, some pretty, pretty good titles, you know, Wolfenstein and Doom and whatnot, and, you know, a couple other things here and there, Dragon Ball Fighters. that's cool, that's cool. But it's still not getting Call of Duty. And now we know Call of Duty is not even close to the, being the most taxing game out there. It's not running on the most taxing engine, the most, you know, unique and advanced futuristic, you know, uh, developer programming engines or anything like that, right? And Call of Duty is on everything. So the fact that it's still not on Switch, 
is a problem. I know a lot of Nintendo fans, fans will say, um, you know, I don't care about COD. Look, I don't really care about COD myself. I mean, the only reason why I want Black Ops 4 is the Blackout mode. But if they didn't have the Blackout mode, I, I'd skip it like I've done pretty much every year for the last 10 years, right? Um, but those things do matter. You know, the Switch getting Fortnite, that definitely mattered. And it's good that it has that game on there. Every system should always strive and every company should always want to have these biggest, most popular pop culture games on their system, right? I mean, at least with the Wii U, you know, we got like some of the Assassin's Creed or was it just one? I think three and four came out there, right? And stuff like that. The new Assassin's Creed, I think, is only getting, I'm pretty sure it's only getting the, um, like the streamed version of it or whatever, right? The cloud version. Yeah, that's what it is. And no one's really going to mess with that. That's, that's malarkey. That's some bullshit. It's probably going to run like shit unless you just have incredible internet. But that, 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 that's, that's why Nintendo needs to have this, this stronger revision here. So that way, what, you know, what Capcom has done and what Ubisoft has done with Assassin's Creed, right? They don't have to do the cloud versions. They can just go ahead and just make the games on the system itself. I've always said this, and I will always believe this. But if Nintendo, in this day and age, again released a console that was on par with the competition from a power perspective to the point where it got most if not all the third party games that the PS4 and Xbox got I I just I really just think that would be the best system I mean oh, granted they would of course have to have features and good online so I'm saying like if it included all those things as well but from a library standpoint if you have Nintendo's first party games, first party repertoire like that, like with the third party games, that's that's a hard combination to beat, right? Because while Sony does put out some some great you know first party titles, um, nowadays you know they're far and few in between and whatnot, right? Uh, I believe this like the Switch in its first year like released like just as many high quality exclusives than like Sony has this entire generation you know thus far. I'm not saying that's for sure. I'm just giving like a, a a rough estimate idea type thing. I don't know the exact numbers myself, but you know, Sony has kind of trickled out the first party exclusives like that. You know, we have Uncharted, God of War. You know, <laughs> uh, Spider Man. Uh, and again, I'm not saying that the PS4 doesn't have a bunch of exclusives, but a large portion <clears throat> um, of its exclusives thus far. Have came from you know external developers and whatnot. We've kind of seen uh, a lower quantity of exclusives coming from Sony themselves this gen. And then on top of that, uh, Nintendo's games just kind of generally score higher most of the time, especially when it comes to a Mario or, or Zelda game or something, right? So, I like I said, I would still always hold this opinion, and that's that regardless of all of my criticisms for Nintendo, whatever I have to say about them. They've mastered their craft. They know how to make a game, and they know how to make a damn good game. No one can deny that. If you deny that, you're just you're you're either kidding yourself, you're you know it's true, but you're lying, or you just haven't been gaming for a long time at all. You're not a gamer if you don't think that Nintendo has mastered the craft of creating a video game. They know how to polish the hell out of a game. They know how to make a game control well. They know how to make a game look well as long as they have the hardware. You know. Nintendo knows how to make some damn good games. And that's the reason why, after all of these years, you know, a lot of people just think every single time a Mario Zelda comes out, people get wrapped up in nostalgia. If you think after like 30 freaking years almost, right, that it's just nostalgia giving these games high review scores, you're kidding yourself and you're crazy. The fact that people haven't got tired of these games shows you the level and extent of Nintendo's craftsmanship when it comes to creating video games. So I just feel like it would be the ultimate combination to just have Nintendo's amazing first party games and also all of the third party games. I mean, you could really just not want for anything more than that. That's, that's all I've ever wanted from Nintendo, right? I mean, of course, I will always own a PS4 because I have to play like the Sony exclusives and whatnot. But the Nintendo fan base has never really had the luxury like past the 2D era, right? They've really never had the luxury of just being able to have one system. And of course, like I just said, I'm not saying this for myself because I was still always on the PS4. I was still always having my PC. So I'm speaking for, on behalf of others as well. 
other Nintendo fans, they just don't have the luxury, especially those who are tight on money, they don't have the luxury to just own a Nintendo system. Nintendo has not given their fans that since the Super Nintendo days. The N64 is when that thing started, that whole idea kind of started dying off because a lot of third-party developers couldn't put their games on the N64 because the cartridges didn't hold enough space. And that's the reason why Final Fantasy VII didn't go to the N64. And man, if Final Fantasy VII went to the Nintendo 64 and the Nintendo 64 had a CD-based, uh, a, a CD, well, if it was a CD-based system, history might be very, very different right now. You know, a lot of people don't think about that, but these things matter. So for those of you who think that, you know, not getting third-party games matter, they do. They do. And don't forget, when a third-party game gets sold on a system, that system's manufacturer gets some of that money. So every third-party game that comes to Nintendo systems gives Nintendo money. The more money Nintendo makes, well, this is how it should work anyways, but the more we should get in return. That's how it should work, right? Like, maybe we could get better online if Nintendo had the extra revenue. Now you might say, oh, that's what they plan on doing with Switch Online. We'll see, as of right now, not looking very likely. But uh, Nintendo's missing out still. And like I said, the third party support's been okay. But we all know it's still missing a lot and a lot and a lot of things. It's not getting Soul Calibur. It might not get the next Mortal Kombat unless the Switch revision is stronger hardware that is able to run a, a downscaled version of that game. I know, um, I know there's... There's tons of third-party games out there who, that may be able to run on Switch that aren't on there, um, considering Doom and Wolfenstein are on there and whatnot. But also, don't forget that there's a lot of developers who kind of will just refuse to make certain versions of their games if they're not able to hit the performance that they want. And that is totally fair. Even if this game or that game could technically run on the Switch, developers are completely entitled to not wanting to put it on the system if they can't reach 60 frames if they can't reach 1080p or at least 900p, some developers just don't want to do that with their creation, right? And honestly, if I was a developer, I'd, I'd feel the same way for the most part, really. Like, if I'm like, oh yeah, I can put my game on the system if I run it in 480p, but I, I, I'm not going to want my game to have a 480p version. I'm not going to defile my game like that, you see what I'm saying? I'm not saying it's that bad, you know, on the Switch or whatever, but you guys see what I'm saying. And even with games like Doom and Switch, they're still not 30 frames locked, and the resolution is still dynamic. So it's not, and, and, and you guys saw, I did a review on, I guess it was kind of a review on Doom on Switch, and I said I thought the port was pretty good, um, but it's still not ideal. So you really can't, you still can't blame, despite the fact that those games and a couple of others are on Switch, you still really cannot blame a lot of third-party developers for not putting their games on the Switch just yet. Um, so... Nintendo definitely needs to make a stronger version of this hardware. What would I personally like to see? I would like to see a better screen. Uh, the Switch's screen is okay. Same resolution. It can, stay, it can stay 720p. You don't need a, a 1080p resolution on a screen that size. 720 is fine, especially considering the fact that it's 720 right now and a lot of games don't even run 720 on it in the first place. Why would we move up to 1080p when most games wouldn't run in 1080p either? You know what I mean? Um, so keep it 720, but, you know... Update it to the more modern type of screens that we have that are more energy efficient, um, that are brighter, more crisp looking, more sharp looking. Um, battery life, honestly, um, that's most likely what will be improved. I'm not really caring too much about the battery life of the Switch because I just kind of always have my, have my charger with me. So it's just kind of a matter of whatever, right? Um, what else do I want to say on it? More storage space, although, you know, considering it's a handheld, it's going to be flash memory. So if they do increase the storage space, space guys, really only expect 64. Only expect 64 if they do increase the storage space. Um, but outside of, outside of that and outside of just having a, a beefier hardware in general, um, I don't know. I think there's, there's really not much on the Switch itself, the actual system, the actual tablet system itself. I think this is a good piece of hardware, right? And I've always said that, and I've said that from day one. I think this is a good piece of hardware. Um, for the re revision, though, I would like them to give a D-pad on that second Joy-Con. I understand why they did it this way, so they could do the whole two-player thing and turn it sideways, and they have face buttons. But considering this is going to be a revision, and most of the people buying this thing are going to be enthusiasts, you know, there's going to be, I feel like there's going to be more actual gamers 
buying a revision of this. So go ahead and give them the D-pad and the casuals could just keep their rinky dink little four button uh, left Joy-Con, right? Um, but yeah, um, the hardware changes I want are actually to the dock itself. I want an ethernet port on this freaking dock. And I know that might, that has really nothing to do with a switch revision, but I'm hoping that along with this, they have a dock revision as well. Add some more ports to the dock, give the dock a couple more, um, you know, ports and functionality and, and, and things like that. You know what I mean? Um, maybe, uh, you know, an audio jack on there would be cool. Um, let me think what else they could put on there. You know, things for like, maybe like a surround sound, you know, surround sound jack, you know, like I was talking about, um, ethernet port. There's a couple of other ideas I had. I, they escaped me right now, but I think the dock should definitely have more functionality itself. I think it should just be more than just a shell that sends your image to your TV, right? Make it an actual real and true part of the Switch. Don't make it so important to where it's integral to the Switch experience. Like if you lose your dock, like, oh man, like my Switch is a piece of crap system now because half of the system is gone because I lost the dock. Not to that level, but just give the dock itself more value. There are some things the Switch is missing, like an Ethernet port. I was playing Dragon Ball Fighters on the Switch online and most of the connections were just god awful because most Switch users are on Wi-Fi because they don't get an Ethernet connection out the gate like the other systems do. Um, I remember in the past that um, before the NX came out, that was the NX, well, it was known as the NX at the time. Um, There's that patent with the uh, external, uh, what was it, the supplemental computing unit or something like that. And it was this thing that you apparently like hook up to the dock and it actually runs your games better. Um, I think they should release a new dock that, and, and one, one of the ideas people had was that, oh, they, they haven't shown or they haven't said anything about this device. So maybe the Switch's dock is going to give it more power, right? So maybe uh, maybe the Switch revision really won't be on the Switch itself, at least when it comes to the power. Maybe the Switch revision will include that idea people previously had, right? Where the dock itself is a supplemental uh, computing unit. So when you plug it in, the, the, the Switch system itself gets extra power from the dock. I think that'd be a great idea. And and yes, I know it technically does get extra power, but it's not necessarily getting extra power. It's just plugged in to a AC unit, right? So it's it's running at full power. The power is still within the switch itself, you know what I mean? There's no actual power coming from the dock. Um, I think that'd be a great idea, but we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, but yeah, outside of that though, I just want a more crisp, uh, a crisp screen, a uh, crisp, I don't know why I couldn't say that word. Um, and just up, please up the storage. I downloaded like two things on my Switch before and it got full. And like that was it. And I had to go out and buy a 128 gigabyte SD card. It's kind of nuts. Give me a D-pad on the Joy-Con. I think this would be a perfect opportunity to, for them to come out with a new line of Joy-Cons. Um, especially one with the D-pad, please. Probably better sticks or something. I think the sticks are fine considering though. I mean, you really, you can't get like a console stick on a handheld. That's just never going to happen. That's why the Vita and the Switch's sticks are always going to be kind of crappy. But they're they're okay. They're serviceable. Um, but yeah, guys, that's pretty much all I have to say. Um, like I said, whether or not they do add additional power to this system, that, this is a win-win situation. Hand, uh, Nintendo revisions always sell well, especially when it comes to their handheld department. So it's still going to sell either way. It's going to be good to, um, it's going to be good in revitalizing the Switch's momentum. But I also think that if they don't add power to this, that could be a huge, huge missed opportunity because Nintendo should still be striving to capitalize on all of these major and popular third-party titles. They're missing out on a ton of revenue. They're missing out on a ton of console sales, and they could be doing a lot, lot more. I have another video I want to do after this video because right before I started filming this video, I saw some bull crap that Reggie said. And I know some of you guys probably know exactly what I'm talking about. So look forward to my video on that. But thanks for watching, guys. I'll see y'all later. Peace.